What's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of Kelvin's Garage and today I have a very very special episode for you. Today we are going to resurrect a legend. Here it is. My legendary 1992 Toyota pickup otherwise known as the Toyota Helix or Hilux depending on what country you are in but this is the one and no this video is not inspired by Whistlin Diesel and no I did not run out and go buy a 1992 Toyota Hilux right away after seeing his videos I appreciate that he has made the Toyota Helix the Toyota Hilux such a popular vehicle for today's projects but I'm here to show you my 1992 Toyota pickup which I've had for a very long time. Now let's take a look around my 1992 Toyota Helix. You can see that uh, it's seen some better days and like I said I've had this for quite some time now and uh, you know it's got some rust on it, paint's fading and it's got cobwebs everywhere it's been sitting around in the sun this whole time but lo and behold it is what it is the legendary helix two-wheel drive pickup not the four-wheel drive version but uh, this is the standard cab base model and it still runs like a dream but here are the wheels got some cobwebs we can take a look here it's got a little bit of surface rust leaf springs all right spare still good got a steel bumper these good old steel bumpers with some rust on them right tail light still good lift gate or the tailgate okay that needs to be fixed okay <laughs> but uh overall still good got a little bit of body damage here but nothing too severe for a work truck a good old work truck like this one uh, but the paint has seen better days Sometimes it's used for storage got some wood in there a Little bit dusty Look at this old thing. It's been sitting here in the Sun for a lot of years Take a look inside the door panel still good. Look at that Toyota quality now the seats been worn out this bench seat You don't even see bench seats anymore these days, but this good old two-seater pickup truck solid look at that you can just unbolt this and replace this right away get a spare somewhere or get it reupholstered but uh let's step inside here all right steering columns uh housing fell off some number of years ago i still have it but the the little uh joints where the screws screw in that broke off some time ago but uh this is what it's like to be sitting in a 1992 classic now Toyota pickup Helix but uh, let's take a look here 241,000 original miles okay and then we've got all the instruments here the fuel the speedometer and the temperature meter and that's it all right that's it pretty simple okay and another cool thing about this one is that it's manual all right guys this is a manual manual four-cylinder toyota pickup okay you can't even get these anymore these days okay save the manuals right and yes kelvin used to drive manual all the time so i used to drive manual all the time i used to drive this daily i would throw my bike in the back right here throw my bike in the back go somewhere adventurous and then bike around town and that's how i used to do it all right let's take a look under the hood Hood latch still works, okay. And lift the hood up. Got the little lever right there. Let me see if I can still find it. All right, here it is. Voila. Look at that beautiful engine. Look at this engine bay. It's so simple, so clean, right? And yes, for those of you who are asking, this is the standard, standard, basic 
Toyota pickup from 1992, so it has the standard, standard, basic fuel injected at that time already. 22RE, four cylinder engine, the bulletproof one. This is the one, the, the one. This is the engine that they say that could never die. And over the years, I had to do quite a bit of work on this, but uh, it doesn't die, all right? And I've done all sorts of things on this engine from repairing the timing chain, the timing chain guides. I even replaced the head gasket on this one time. All sorts of work was done on this car in its heyday. All right, the radiator, replaced that too. Had a mild front end accident at some point and uh, replaced some of these parts, these grills, corner lights and so forth. There's all aftermarket stuff. Okay, we got our airflow meter, right? Good old airflow meter. Got our distributor right here and we got our ignition coil. I right, got a brake booster, still fluid in it. Still should be working well. Okay, and all of our vacuum lines, good old vacuum lines from this era. All right, so got our fuse box, got our battery and everything is intact, all right? So today we are going to start up our 1992 Toyota pickup Helix. And it hasn't been started for a while. And as you can see, it's pretty much been out in the sun. And I'm gonna explain to you why that is in just a bit. But right now we're going to talk about starting this thing up. It hasn't been started up for a while. And you might think the battery is dead. It probably is, okay? But we can use it temporarily. All right, it may not have enough cranking amps to turn the thing on, but it certainly has enough uh, usability that once we get the engine running, it will not shut the, the whole system down. It'll, it'll keep it going, okay? And how am I going to start up this bad boy? Well, a couple of weeks ago, I bought this really cool gadget, this lithium ion jump starter power pack. Now, these have been out for quite some time and I never got around to trying them. And we're gonna try it today, okay? I've tried it, it works wonderfully. And uh, I'm gonna show you how it works today. Now this one is a, is a fairly inexpensive one that I bought at my favorite auto parts store, Walmart. Okay, and this is called the Everstart Max Jump Starter. And uh, it's, it's probably one of the cheapest ones, maybe only like $50. And uh, there's a whole wide range of these. You can get them, um, all sorts of brands start have started making these. But this one is one of the cheaper ones, like I said, but it's good enough, okay? It's got 400 peak amps of cranking power, okay? And it may not look like it does, this little box here with the, you know, this yellow and black little box that's essentially basically a big USB uh, battery, right? But it works, it definitely works. All right, and we can see here, here's a box. It's got these clamps. Okay, here's all the descriptions here. Mobile power, fast charging, all right? 400 to 500 amps, and it's equivalent to one of these old old things here, which uh, people used to carry around. They still sell these, but uh, you know, it's more convenient to have a little one, right? Okay, and this one, because the cold cranking amps is lower, than some of the bigger models it's only recommended to be used on a four cylinder and that's what we've got all right we've got the jump starter charging cable and carrying bag and the clamp cable okay the very important clamp cable and this shows how much energy it has okay 22.2 watt hours with a battery life of a thousand cycles cranking current 400 amps peak 200 amps start vehicle voltage 12 that's what we've got Operating temperature, minus 4 to 140 degrees, basically the whole operating range that you'll ever encounter. And uh, USB, 5 amps, 2.4, or sorry, 5 volts, 2.4 amps. Okay, and this lithium ion jump starter quickly starts vehicles in emergencies. Great for power sports, motorcycles, and for four-cylinder cars. Okay, so if you got an ATV or something like that, you know, you've got your uh, motorcycle or something, this would work well too. All right, charge all USB devices. So you can use it as a USB battery charger. So instead of lugging around your little skinny one, okay, you've got your big old USB charger that's also capable of starting up your car. Okay, so that's like a double positive, right? And you can power all your iPads, iPhones, etc. cetera. Okay, battery clamps with smart cable. And we're gonna show you what that looks like. Basically that prevents you from screwing this whole thing up. 
okay? It prevents you from attaching it wrong or using it when it's not ready, etc. okay? Indicator lights, compact design, power on off switch, etc. All right, this exciting new product, Jump Starter. All right, reverse polarity protection. Here's where all the smart features come in. Short circuit protection, low voltage protection, high temperature protection, reverse charging protection, and auto reset. And here is the carrying bag. Okay, we've got the instruction manual. All right, and you can read that uh, when you have time and you want to learn more about your lithium battery pack. Okay, we've got the USB charge cable. We've got the unit itself. Okay, here it is. The EverStart Max. And we've got uh, the various ports on it. USB port for powering other devices. We've got the port for connecting the smart battery clamp. And we've got the charging port for, for this device itself. Okay, and then we can use this cable to either source power from this battery pack or we can charge it. Okay, it doesn't come with a charger that goes into the AC plug, but you can use a cable. You can use any kind of an iPhone charger or iPad charger and then uh, plug this in here to charge that. But we don't need to do that because we've got 100% power. So we turn on the switch, press this button, and look, four bars and we're 100% charged. So this thing is ready to go, all right? And we'll show you that in just a second. And we've also got the, what they're calling here, the smart cable, okay? Smart cable, which has the battery clamps on there. Okay, the traditional battery clamps that look like jumper cables. And then we've got the end right here, which is the end that plugs into the battery pack, okay? With some really neat and nifty quick start instructions. So just in case you forgot to bring your manual, all right, you can still use this thing, okay? And the size is so compact, you can bring this anywhere. You can charge your devices and and just in case your car dies out one day, you could whip this out, start reading the directions, and just jumpstart your car right away. Okay, so let's take a look at the directions here. It says, number one, plug in the this end here, okay, into the battery pack. Okay, number two, hook the cables, all right, to the battery. Okay, make sure you don't confuse the positive and negative uh, terminals of the uh, jump starter with uh, the battery but uh, here it says and it, it illustrates the proper way and the proper way is to put the red on the positive and to put the black on a grounded part of the vehicle it doesn't necessarily say to put it on the battery and this is kind of recommended because the ground of the vehicle you know can be on the block the engine block you know it could be anywhere on the body all right, so it works either way. It's probably better to do it on the body of the vehicle than on the negative terminal. But uh, we're going to see in just a second. Okay, number three. All right, it says that we have to make sure that the green LED is solid on. All right, green LED is solid on. Okay, and then you turn the key. All right, so again, plug the smart connector in. Plug the positive clamp to the positive terminal of the battery, connect the negative clamp to the ground of the vehicle somewhere, and then wait for this green LED to turn solid on. And once it does, you turn the crank, all right? So over here, there are some LEDs here, all right? And one of them in here will be a green solid LED, and we're gonna look for that before we even start this thing up, okay? And there's actually some other LED behaviors here and if we look, it says very clearly, LED behavior, green LED solid, ready to jumpstart. Check the manual if green LED is flashing or red LED is flashing or beeping sound, okay? So we don't want any of these two conditions. We wanna look for that green LED solid. Okay, but first things first is, are we even ready to start? Okay, so the engine has been sitting like this, dormant for quite some time. And we need to make sure that the car is even ready to go, which means we should check the fluids. Okay, check the fluids. All right, so check the engine oil. All right, we'll just pull out the dipstick, take a quick look at it. 
It's got oil in it. We could probably have to replace that anyway, but it does have oil in it. All right, check the coolant. Okay. So you can take a look through here at the bottle here. Reservoir. See that that's got some fluid in there. Okay, the hose is wet. Okay, it's got the Toyota red coolant. Okay, the good stuff. So it doesn't look green, but uh, it does have coolant in it. Yeah, I filled it up at some point. If you really want to, you can take off the radiator cap. Check out that there is coolant in there. And remember, never open when hot. This thing will just spew out coolant everywhere, okay? Since my car has been dormant for a while, we can undo this and take a quick look at the radiator. And voila, it does have fluid in there. Okay, the red Toyota fluid, the good stuff, expensive stuff. All right. And so we are okay in that sense. Okay, we're okay. Looks like we have the fluid, at least the fluid necessary to turn this thing on. Okay, got the oil, have the coolant. Another thing I like to do is when my car is dormant for a while, I leave the battery unplugged. All right, so I take off the ground battery. I don't take off the uh, positive battery, I take off the ground battery. Either one is probably okay. So what we need to do is we need to, even though the battery is probably dead and doesn't have enough juice to start the car, we still need to connect the battery. So we'll put our battery clamp back on here and then grab your 10 millimeter and just fasten the battery clamp. Okay, get it nice and firm, all right? Nice and firm. Okay, just like so. All right. Okay, next I'm going to connect the positive red clamp to the positive terminal of the battery. So remember that this one was the positive, okay? We've got the red boot that goes over here. Do not get them mixed up, okay? All right, and for the black clamp, I know it said connect it to the body. So we can do that anywhere on the body, anywhere that's a sheet metal body, basically. Okay, just don't connect it to the positive terminal and don't connect it to the alternator positive terminal. Okay, so those are the only two locations you need to watch out for. But you know what? I'm just going to connect it to the negative terminal of the battery. What the heck, right? What the heck? All right, now we're going to take a look at the device. So earlier it was flashing. The green light was flashing. Okay, let me take this off and see that again. Okay, I took off the black terminal. Let's take a look here, it's flashing, okay? It's not ready to go. Okay, it's not ready. It does not sense that there's a battery loaded onto the starter. Okay, but I'm gonna connect this now. Okay, and that flashing is gonna turn into solid. There it goes, okay, solid. So it's ready to go, ready to fire up. Now, the only other thing is make sure that this thing doesn't fall off by accident when you start the car. It could uh, basically just vibrate off of it, okay? Okay, we're ready to start up this legendary Toyota Helix. Okay, it's a manual, so foot on the clutch. Okay, make sure it's in neutral, okay? And here we go. Voila, it lives. The 1992 Helix lives. Still got the radio going on, but I'm gonna turn that off right now. All right, and it started up. Now what we need to do is get back out and disconnect the starter, the jump starter. All right, we'll just disconnect that, disconnect that, and we're good to go. Check out this powerful, ultra-reliable 22RE engine. This is the engine that will never die. The engine that is infinitely serviceable. Runs like a champ. There's the intake manifold. We have these good old throttle cables. You can rev it up right here. Listen to that beauty. Listen to that beauty. Now, one other thing I want you guys to notice is that this is a manual vehicle, all right? Okay, look at that. Good old gearbox. Okay. I had the clutch pressed in there, so don't do that when the clutch is not pressed in. All right, but look at this, okay? 
Have you noticed something strange? It's a manual. So where's the tachometer? Okay, it doesn't have a tachometer, all right? So these old school Toyota pickups do not have a tachometer, all right? There's only a speedometer and two simple gauges. The fuel, which is nearly empty, and the temperature, okay? So what does that mean? That means you have to use your senses, okay, to drive this bad boy. So maybe this isn't a beginner car to learn manual on, but once you get the hang of it, you use your hearing, the good old hearing, the hearing that will not uh, play a strong role when you start driving your electric car, right? So we want to hear that motor spur up and at that right pitch, that right hum, you know what RPM you're at, okay? You know what RPM you're at, you know when to shift, you know when to downshift. It's a beautiful experience driving manual. And unfortunately, manual is on its waning days and uh, we won't get to hear sounds like this anymore. And this. Okay, so the engine's been running for a while, nice and quiet, nice and smooth. And I just wanted to show you guys how you can start up a long dormant vehicle like my 1992 Toyota pickup Helix 22RE fully manual. It even has manual steering, okay? No power steering. Just thought I'd throw that in there. All right, so you really gotta build those forearms to drive this bad boy, all right? Now, I just wanted to show it to you starting this up and now I'm gonna turn it off. Okay, so I wanna show you guys the jump starter pack after I've used it once, okay? Switches on so we can see how much juice it has left. Uh, hitting the button, still four bars, okay? Still four bars. So it turns out these little jump starter packs, they're actually good for a lot of jump starts, okay? And I found this in my experience. Either a lot of jump starts or you could be, you know, cranking the engine for quite some time if your engine has a little bit of trouble starting. This jump starter supplies enough juice for like a constant crank for, for you know, several seconds. And you could do it repeatedly before it drains. So I've done this on other vehicles before. And so I highly recommend this jump starter. It's very, very good. And uh, I can't believe uh, I didn't have this technology for so long, all right? So, and they're pretty affordable. So I would say it's definitely worth the money. Think about getting one of these. Um, if you have a lot of cars or you have some old cars uh, that lay dormant for a while. So some of you are wondering, Kelvin, what is the point of this video, okay? Why are you showing us this beautiful, magnificent, awesome, legendary vehicle, all right? This 22RE fully manual beast, all right? The one that's going to survive the apocalypse. Why are you showing me this magnificent project car, right? This crazy project car and then turning it off. Okay, so what is the point of all this? Well, what happened, right? So I've had this car for many, many years. I've had this car probably since 2003, if I remember that right. And over the years, I drove it every day until at some point or another during the life of the vehicle, I stopped passing smog. Okay, I stopped passing that stringent California smog test uh, on this vehicle. Even some of those little special techniques that I've shown you uh, on my channel have not worked for this vehicle. And so it's kind of in limbo and it's been in limbo for quite some time now, several years, all right? It's just been sitting here baking in the sun, all right? And the reason why it's been baking in the sun is because, you know, life gets busy, okay? Life gets really busy and you just don't know what to do, right? So in California, if you don't know this, you can't even sell the vehicle unless it passed smog. So another pain about California is that you need to pass smog for basically anything, even transacting the vehicle, unless you just donate it or you just send it to the junkyard. Two things that I kind of hesitate to do, right? Because I do love this car, had a lot of great memories in it. But you know what? Maybe it's time to let it go. I don't know, right? You know, life gets busy, you work on other things. I'm not a professional mechanic, all right? I don't do it for a living. I do have a lot of skills that I've built up over the years. Okay, so maybe I could become a professional mechanic one day, but that's actually not my aspiration for a career. But uh, I have done a lot of work on this car. Okay, it's hard for me to let go, but maybe it's time to let go. What do you think? Okay, what would you guys do if you were in my shoes? Would you let go of your awesome project car? 
you know, you, that you can't even sell unless you sell it to maybe a dealer. I heard you can sell them to dealers uh, without having the smog test. Okay, you can sell them to dealers and maybe they ship it off somewhere to another state. And that's where they get, uh, that's where they get uh, a second chance at life. Or I should donate it for a good cause, you know, give it to the children. That's okay by me too. Or should I try to get a smog? Should I, uh, you know, do a little tune-up on it, get it back on the road? It's definitely roadworthy, all right? It just doesn't pass smog. Okay, so, so that's the main issue. I think the, uh, the rings on the pistons uh, got worn out, so there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of uh, engine oil that's getting into the combustion chamber, and basically it needs new rings, all right? And that's a big job that I don't have the time for. But uh, I don't know, what do you guys think I should do? Should I sell the car? Should I give it away? Should I, uh, you know, try to smog it and sell it to a real person? You know, I've bought this car in 2003, and if I remember right, I paid about $1,800 for it. And at that time, it was a really neat find. Everybody loves pickup trucks, right? Because pickup trucks are the most utilitarian vehicle. You can basically do anything with it, all right? Even the beater pickup trucks still have use because it's got this bed right here, okay? This truck bed. And as long as it's got this truck bed, you know, everyone uh, can use it for their uh, bikes. They could use it for their motorcycles. They could use it to haul engines. They could use it to haul your, your lawn care equipment. You could use it to haul anything, okay? So that's why this uh, car is so legendary. Um, it's easy to fix, fairly easy to fix, okay? I'll get into that maybe another day. But, uh, you know, parts are abundant, right? These engines... Uh, are, are very abundant. They're everywhere. They're four-cylinder. It saves gas. Okay. I think, I, like I said, I paid $1,800 for this vehicle. I bought it off a woman who could no longer drive the manual vehicle because she had been in some kind of an accident and had a surgery. So I had a, I got a great deal on it at the time. I don't know what it's worth now. Maybe it's worth even more because of inflation and so forth. Uh, maybe it's even worth more than $1,800 uh, that I paid for it in 2003. Okay, but uh, you know, it's a great car and like I said a lot of memories, but it is getting older and so am I And maybe I don't want to drive a Toyota pickup helix for the rest of my life. All right, so uh, I hope you enjoyed this video, you know, leave your thoughts and comments below and I'll see you next time on Kelvin's garage and don't forget to subscribe I really need you guys to subscribe to my channel so I can keep making content. See you next time